Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to It's All Me. Tonight is part two of the burping contest Q&A. It's finally here. We're not gonna waste any time. We're gonna jump right into it. And tonight's Burpicola is going to be the unsweetened strawberry mango sparkling water. So let's crack this bad boy open and get this party started. Wow, fumble fingers. Zero calories per serving. <sighs> Baby, let's go. Let's go. All right. First question gets to the roots of It's All Me. How did you decide to start doing videos for YouTube? It's pretty simple. I was working a job and it was awful. Literally from the day I started that job, I was miserable. I was actually leaving another job and going to this job to try to escape the toxic environment that I was a part of at the previous job. So I got this new job, went there, started there, and it was, for lack of a better term, hell from day one. In the midst of attempting to learn this new position, I found myself taking breaks and just searching the internet, you know, for something to get my mind off of the, the chaos all around me. And I found a YouTuber by the name of Ali Law. Basically, he does just crazy things. He breaks the law a lot, or at least he used to. He got into a lot of trouble, went to court. It's, it's just crazy because it actually allowed me to step away from reality and just be consumed by his content. And it was in the moment that I started to realize the resurgence of creativity that I, I was born with, that the Lord gave me when I was you know, birthed into this world. I started to branch out and try to figure out how I could use my creativity again. You know, Seth and I, we've been doing filmmaking since 1999. So it's 2021 now, so you do the math. It's been over 20 years that we've been doing this. Everything from full-fledged documentaries to short films to, to vlogs, you name it, we've pretty much done it. I just wanted to figure out where I fit into that individually. The Lord laid on my heart to consider doing a YouTube channel. I had had friends and family tell me, hey, you know, you have a great personality, you should do something for YouTube. And I was always like, I, you know, I was insecure about it. And I just always would say, no, I'm not, it's not really for me, I don't have the time. Well, finally I realized like, I have to make the time for this because this is something that's within like my DNA. And so I took several months and started to just research the ins and outs of YouTube, of being a YouTuber, of being a vlogger, of different content that people enjoy watching, just trying to tap into my creative juices. So I actually started my journey working on my channel, it would be the summer of 2018, and I didn't premiere my channel as It's All Me until January of 2019. So I worked on it for a long time, and I just, you know, I was filming different things and just kind of building my, my library, editing different videos. I premiered my very first It's All Me video, and the rest is history. Oh, that was food. All right, next question. How would I describe myself in terms of personality? Allow me the opportunity to be retrospective for a second. In all honesty, I think, you know, I'm a pretty easygoing, laid back guy. Um, I don't really get offended by much, if anything. And when it does offend me though, like, it's it's bad. Like, I can get, uh, get pretty worked up about it. it. It takes a lot to get me to that point. You know, whether it's, telling me that Demon Hunter is a terrible band. I don't care about that. But if you're sitting there saying, Demon Hunter, a Christian metal band, oh, their content isn't Christian, basically condemning them and things like that. You all know how much I love Demon Hunter. I will legit go to bat for Demon Hunter and defend them until the day that I die. So things like that really ruffle my feathers and I will absolutely go after your throat for things like that. But again, it takes a lot to get me to that point. I'll defend my family till the day that I die. I'll go to bat for my family and my friends, but I'm just an easygoing guy. I, I'm laid back, I like to have a good time, but I also like to have a serious time as well. Like I think there's this point where you have to have a, a balance of both to where you can just turn it off and just let yourself be a blob. And then, you know, go be social for a while. If you have any question about what kind of personality I have, take a look at It's All Me. I think it's a perfect showcase 
of all facets of my, my personality, of who I am as Jesse. You watch It's All Me, it pretty much gives you me wrapped up in a bow and says, here you go, take a look at who I am to the core, at the root of it all, and that pretty much answers that question. <laughs> Next question, what is an abandoned place that I have heard of and I really want to visit. So that would be Waverly Hills Sanatorium. It is absolutely massive. It's extremely haunted, if you believe in that. And so there would definitely be precautions that I would take. But Waverly Hills, when I was a ghost hunter for the better part of 15 years, that was like a gold mine. That was what people sought to get their hands on. Now, it was always open to rent and have it for the night. But again, it's big, big money. I never had the chance to get there. We never had the funds to be able to rent that, make the trip, but it's still on the old bucket list. It would be uh, pretty difficult for, for me to say no if someone's like, hey, we're gonna take a trip to the Waverly Hills Sanatorium and we wanna bring you with us. Come along and, you know, it would be pretty darn hard for me to say no. Just throwing that out there. Waverly Hills, look it up. There's been Ghost Adventures episodes. I think Ghost Hunters has been there, maybe not. I, I can't really say. Um, but look it up on YouTube, just type in Waverly Hills. I guarantee you're gonna find a plethora of content to watch and uh, watch your minds get blown with how incredible this location is. Nice. Nice. Next question, what is the nicest job that I've ever had? I've had a lot of jobs in my life. I've been a janitor, I've been a casino housekeeper, I have been a program coordinator for a nonprofit organization, I've been a delivery driver, I've been a customer service associate, I've been a loss prevention supervisor, and loss prevention is basically the security of retail stores that keep people from shoplifting or stop shoplifters and then get the police involved, do a bunch of paperwork. A YouTuber is another job. I've been a house cleaner. I worked at a pizza ranch for five and a half years, so I'm really good at making pizzas. But the nicest job, if I really, really think about it, the one that you know challenged me, but like the, had the best environment, I worked for my father at the place that he used to work at, um, Sunnyview. I visited it in one of my videos. He was the manager there and he needed a janitor. And my brother and I had just moved down to the Des Moines area. I didn't have a job. And so my dad said, hey, I'm in need, you're in need. Why don't you relocate yourself to Rockwell City, my hometown, for a month and work for me as the janitor. And I said, shoot, how hard can that be? Well, it, I mean, it definitely had its, its moments and uh, I definitely tried to find times to sneak my phone out when I wasn't supposed to, check Facebook, you know, things like that. Dad, I know you're watching. Sorry about that. I'm just gonna be honest about it. Um, the greatest part about that job, my mom worked there. 
my dad worked there. And my boss was my dad. And like my secondary supervisor was my mom. It literally doesn't get any better than that. Now also, before I, I left that position after a month, I was able to do some demolition in an apartment to get it ready for renovation for future tenants. I got to take a, a sledgehammer and a sawzall and bust walls to the ground and really just felt masculine and muscular and just sweat and sawdust and all this stuff. It was just, it was so cool, it was so much fun. It was something that I always thought about as a kid, like, oh, I wanna just destroy stuff. That was basically what I was able to do and I got paid for it. So it was a one month period. I really enjoyed my time there. There have been facets of, of my jobs that I've enjoyed throughout the years, but honestly, I, I just knew that I was destined for more than a desk job or customer service or delivering medical goods, you know, things like that. And that was uh, another huge reason as to why I started a YouTube channel so that I could do this full time, which is what I'm doing now. I'm a full time YouTuber. I'm a full time creative person. I'm constantly working on videos, not only for this channel, but my second channel, CCPI TV. It's linked right up there. You know, we're just constantly pumping out ideas and content and things like that. So, you know, I guess I finally made it to living out my dream to where this is my job. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm really excited to see where this continues in the journey because they you can't appreciate the victory until you've taken the journey there. <laughs> You know, this stuff is killing it. Woo, doggy. Woo, had to twist the old body around for that one. Next question, how did I meet my wife? And what is our love story? So it's actually a really, really cool story. It was January 3rd, 2016. I had just decided to check out a new church for the very first time, all by myself. <laughs> Seth and Kaylee were attending another church at that time, so I had no one else to go with. I remember sitting in my car, like, 20 minutes before the service started and just like hyping myself up like I can do this I can do this it's just a church I'm just going into a church by myself it should be filled with really loving people and I should be able to find a place to sit no problem no biggie there's someone at my door hold on so I decide to head in there and I'm greeted by some really great people I find a seat I sit down make myself comfortable as comfortable as I could be hiding my insecurities hiding my shyness at that moment this was in an old bar this church was meeting That is my son, Maxwell Lomis, AKA our iRobot floor vacuum. And apparently he died right here and I had no idea and that was him going off. Anyways, so I'm sitting there facing the front of the church. It's in an old bar and the entry door into the church is off to my left hand side here. So I'm sitting there just kind of looking at my Bible. The door opens up and like all of this sunlight just pours through that door. And I remember I was even looking at the door and I squinted and I looked up and I see the silhouette of this person walking in. And I was like, hmm, okay. And I, like, I looked down cause I'm squinting and the person that walked in walked right up to me and just like stands there and I'm like, oh boy, what, what's going on? And I look up and it's my now wife, Cheyenne. She's asking, hi, is there anybody sitting next to you? And I said, no, by all means, sit down next to me. She sits down next to me. This was about 15 minutes after I sat down in that church and literally the rest is history. She had another guy show up earlier, but apparently it was just some guy that she had met the night before and invited to church. Um, there was no connection there whatsoever. And of course, this entire time I'm thinking, oh, that's a boyfriend or that's a, 
uh, a love interest. Wasn't that at all. She wanted to talk to me basically the whole entire time, just like I wanted to talk to her. And inevitably, I invited her out to lunch and it just blossomed from there. That's it. That's the love story for Jesse and Tiny. That's how we met. I think it's a pretty cool story. A lot of people have enjoyed hearing that one throughout the years. Yeah. That's some uh, some good questions there. Thankful for the people that uh, had sent me the questions. Actually, all these questions were provided by Pedro. These were still questions that were sent to me for the original Q&A back in what, February, I think it was, March, whenever that was. And so I just, I had so many left over that that's all I've read. So Pedro, thank you. Shout out to my boy Pedro again for the awesome questions. And we're just gonna keep it going with some burps. And that's pretty much it. We're just gonna burp. Should we burp? Let's burp. <laughs> Ooh, that was a little bit of a push. A little too much of a push in that one. Sorry about that. I tell you, it is a, hold on. It is a very interesting, interesting flavor when you taste lunch about five hours after you ate it. <clears throat> so yeah, that's one of the many perks of doing burping contest videos. Having lunch twice, the same meal, like the exact same meal twice. Head launch again for the third time. You know, I gotta say, <clears throat> some of the best comments I get on my burping contest videos is how disgusting and vile I am. Listen. I don't need your judgment. I don't need your negativity. I know I'm talented. I know I'm blessed. I know that I have burps that people love to hear. Why would I keep that to myself? Why? Why would I keep that all for Jesse when I can share it with the world? I don't want to be selfish. So when you're sitting there thinking I'm vile and disgusting, I want you to think about all these people that need burps in their life. All of those people that need burps. And if you're not one of them, you might just be surprised and find out that you actually are. So on that note, I have a gift for you. Oh, thank you for the support. I'm getting waterlogged and really, really puffy in my belly, my belly region. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a really fun return to the old burping videos. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoy the next two videos that are coming up all with burps. I hope you enjoy them, because I enjoyed them. I enjoyed making them. I enjoyed making them for you, my people, my family, for you. I do this for you. The burps, they're for you. Okay? They're for you, man. They're for you. I'm on a whole new level in this video, okay? I can't help it. I can't help it. 
burps are 2021's love language. Okay? Look it up. Google it. Duck, duck, go it. If you don't want Google stealing your content and you want privacy settings jacked up, then duck, duck, go that son of a gun. Okay? But go to a search engine, type in what is the true love language of 2021, and if burping doesn't come up, all I'm gonna say is they're liars. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Burping Contest Q&A, part two. I'm your host, as always, Jesse Olney of It's Olney. And as always, remember, it is all knee and no foot. And hey, I will see you in the next burping video. Cue it up, boys! I don't have a crew. I don't know why I said that. Goodbye.